uh, up until the past few years, we had little data to really help guide us to understand how do P53 disrupted patients do with these targeted agents, particularly with BTK inhibitors and now with BCL2 uh, fixed duration combinations, et cetera. And uh, what we're finding now as uh, increasing numbers of studies and pooled analyses are coming out, as well as uh, we are having mature data from prospective clinical trials that allowed DEL 17P and P53 disrupted patients in, is we're finding that um, uh, the poor risk prognosis of these patients once treatment is started seems to be now overcome with continuous therapy uh, drugs like ibrutinib, as well as other BTK inhibitors. It's not necessarily restricted to just ibrutinib, but in general, the class of drugs, uh, all three of the major FDA approved BTK inhibitors have demonstrated impressive and very encouraging results in DEL 17P or P53 disrupted CLL, uh, showing very uh, uh, great data, long-term mature data uh, with, with progression-free survivals, essentially uh, equivalent and or very comparable to those patients treated with these drugs uh, without a DEL 17P. And so while, again, deletion 17P, P53 disruption it identifies high-risk disease, we need to be looking for this. We do need to be thinking about our patients. Once we are utilizing continuous therapy BTK inhibitors, we do seem to have uh, moved the needle a little bit and overcome some of this poor risk features once treatment uh, or poor risk outcomes uh, once treatment has initiated on these patients. And so uh, how do we think about these patients in fixed duration, I think remains to be seen. Um, but ultimately with these new drugs, as well as with BCL2 combinations, uh, outcomes are, are very impressive and uh, uh, well improved upon historical controls uh, compared to when we were using chemoimmunotherapy.